All right. Um, these gyrator circuits can get complicated and they're really hard to get a good gut feel for. Really, these circuits are where you actually have to break down and do the mathematics and circuit analysis and stuff to figure out all the feedback paths and stuff, especially the ones with the two op amps and the five resistors and everything. But we're going to take a look at a real simple one. We're going to take a look at this one here, right? And we'll try to get a gut feel for sort of what it's doing. Um, so whenever I see a particular circuit and I try to figure it out, a lot of times it helps to redraw it, okay? And so we are going to be taking a look at this circuit here, all right? So it is just a signal coming in through a capacitor and we're gonna buffer it. So that's all that's, all that's going on here. So if you take a look at the original schematic, we have, uh, here's a resistor going in, we go through a capacitor and then we go through a buffer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this 100k so we can look right here okay and we're not going to be worried about outputs and stuff like that we're going to be taking a look at the input and we're going to be taking a look at the uh the op amp the out output of the op amp now there's also this extra resistor down here this 100k so in this particular circuit if you tried to build this you would find yourself in trouble because uh, you have no DC, uh, no DC value here. You need to bias this thing into some known condition, and so we're gonna we're gonna put a a uh, hundred a hundred k resistor here, and all that does is it forces this input to ground. Remember, this thing is running a plus and minus plus and minus VCC plus twelve minus twelve. And so we need, we need this 100K here just to bias the input. So it doesn't really have anything to do with the gyrator itself. It's just biasing this op amp to make it happy. So let's hook this up and take a look at what's going on. <clears throat> All right, uh, here's our circuit here. And we will take a look at uh, the scope. Now, this is the input. We're sweeping the input from 10 hertz to 10 kilohertz. And so um, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller here. All right. So I'm going to put channel two on the um, op amp. All right, channel two. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So it's basically going to be the same thing. Uh, a little bit smaller, a little bit of loss in there, but um, basically the same thing, but if we zoom in, let's use my zoom function here. Okay, so I'm zooming in here uh, down at the low frequency uh, section here. Let me just stop one of these. And you can see that we have some phase shift. Now, that's what um, capacitors do. They, 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 uh, they phase shift the information. So any, any uh, inductor or any capacitor will shift the phase a bit, right? Okay, so we have this phase shift. Now, what the circulator does, uh, the circulator, um, what the gyrator does is it circulates the information back. So let's take a look at that schematic and kind of give an idea what's going on here. Okay, so we've looked at the input and we've looked at the output here of the op amp, but we have this 100 ohm resistor that feeds back on itself. So it's gonna, it's gonna take that signal we've just looked at and it's gonna add it to the input. So it's gonna add, basically on the oscilloscope, it's gonna add channel one and channel two together. But once it adds those together, guess what? It goes back in around again and it goes round and round and round and it keeps adding that phase shift back in until it reaches some equilibrium, all right? So, um, here we have a pretty big phase shift, okay? And as we, as we move over in frequency, the phase shift starts to get a little bit smaller, but remember, it gets wrapped around, so that phase shift is gonna get multiplied every time it turns the corner, right? Every time it goes around and around and around. So let's put that 100 ohms back into the circuit, all right? And I'll turn the scope back on. So once we turn the, uh, put that 100 ohm feedback in there, now we see that we have let me turn off the zoom just for a second. We have uh, the input signal and now the output signal is uh, attenuated. And that's because we get this phase shift. And if the phase shift is all the way to 180 degrees, then it's gonna cancel itself out. Remember, um, 
the, the phase shift information gets added with the original signal. This is the original signal. And this one keeps getting added in, but it keeps getting added in in this feedback loop. So it gets added in faster and faster, and fa or more and more and more, I should say, right? Um, so if we zoom in on this, we see that it's very small here, right? And if we zoom in over in this section here, let's, oops, let's do that. Let me turn the knob this away. Okay, so here, uh, let's go to where we're about half, half attenuated, okay? And so maybe in here, we're about, we're about half attenuated. And you can see that our phase shift is about halfway. So as the small phase shift keeps getting added back, that small phase shift gets shifted itself. That small sh phase shift gets shifted itself. And it goes round and round and round. And that maybe that's called why they call it a gyrator. It kind of goes, I don't know. I'm not sure where the name came from. Um, but if we go out here where we have basically 100% transmission, okay, we'll go way out here to the end. And you can see, we'll get to zoom in a little bit here so you can see it better. You can see that our phase shift is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until we finally reach a perfectly in phase at the very, very end. So let's see if we can zoom way out over there. Not quite sure how to do with this quickly on the scope, but anyway, there we go. We're in, we're in, we're in, sh we're in phase now. So, so the way that circuit works is it, it creates a phase shift adds it to the original signal and then does it again and does it again and does it again. It keeps looping around and uh, that's what that's what uh, causes this thing to do what it does. All right, so yeah, it's a bit it's a bit strange. Um, let's take a look at it with the other drawing. Maybe that will maybe that will help as well. Sometimes it's it's better to look at something two different ways and and uh, maybe it'll jog something in the brain, help something out. So this is what we have. This is not a gyrator, okay? But if we take the output and we feed it back to the input, that's a gyrator, okay? So this is something like 10K and this is something like 100 ohms. And so we're, we're adding back in a whole lot more than, than we started out with. This is a heavier weighting, this one, right? More current here, less current here. And so um, the output is actually taken off of here. This is out, and this is in. Uh, it, is, it is sort of a strange beast. But what we looked at was we, we, we didn't have the 100 ohms and we saw a small phase shift. And then we put the 100 ohms here and it, it multiplied the phase shift. That's because it shifts a little bit, brings it around, shifts it again, brings it around, shifts it again, brings it around. And uh, you get a, a big phase shift uh, depending on what frequency. And the, the amount of phase shift you get has to do with the frequency and the value of that capacitor. And that sets the, uh, that sets the cutoff of this filter. Okay, well, that was probably as clear as mud, but it's about, it's about all I've got, got to give. Um, otherwise, you have to go through a bunch of mathematics with, uh, you know, J omega and all that other stuff and uh, figure out what these things are doing. But uh, just to give you an idea, it's this weird feedback, feedback shifty phase thing.